So did you know California is banning all gas appliances from homes? I hear you saying, what, no gas stoves? No gas furnaces? No gas water heaters? Well, in less than seven years, there'll be no new gas appliances or heating systems sold in California. To be honest, it's hard to imagine life without gas. So in this video today, I'm gonna to talk about the six things that you can do to electrify your home. I'll also talk about my experience of running my home fully on solar and batteries, and talk about how you can get thousands of dollars in rebates and reduce the cost of running your home by up to 40%. So my name is David Hargreaves, one half of the Brewington Hargreaves team. We're among the top 1% of teams in Sonoma County, covering Healdsburg, Windsor, Santa Rosa, Sebastopol and beyond. If you want to keep in touch with what's happening in the property market in Sonoma County, sign up for our regular newsletter where we feature number of blog posts covering everything from building a home to the cost of a major remodel. I'll put a link in the description below where you can sign up. So in this video, I'll cover everything you need to know about eliminating your use of gas to power your home. Firstly, I want to make it clear that I'm not some sort of climate change activist, but I am a keen landscape photographer and have been lucky enough to have traveled to the Arctic on a number of occasions. So I've managed to see firsthand the impact that climate change is having on both the landscape and also the wildlife with animals such as polar bears being impacted. It's not surprising that the climate is changing when we consider we're pumping out 162 million tonnes of man-made global warming pollution into the atmosphere every day, as if the atmosphere was some sort of open sewer. Clearly, there's no single action that's gonna solve climate change, but certainly changing our individual energy use by just a small amount soon starts to add up as more and more people do it. So as you'd expect, California's definitely taken the lead in the US when it comes to banning the sale of all gas appliances by 2030 and banning the sale of gas cars by 2035. In fact, gas appliances are already banned in all new built homes in Santa Rosa City. And the same is true in Healdsburg and Sonoma County unincorporated, with the exception of gas stoves, which still are permitted. And in fact, there's already discussions on banning gas furnaces and water heaters a lot earlier than is mandated in California. So what are the options for adopting a completely electric lifestyle? And are the alternatives any good? So let's start with cars. This is probably the easiest one. I'm lucky in that I chose to switch to an electric vehicle a few years ago, and you know, I was lucky that I could afford to buy one. There's no question that electric cars to date have definitely been more expensive to purchase, but you know, that's definitely rapidly changing. One thing that is certain is that they're way cheaper to run, costing on average 60% less than a gasoline car. As anyone who's had an electric car will testify, not only are they a better environmental choice, but I'd also argue that as long as you've got one that does, you know, over 300 miles on a single charge, they definitely provide a better overall experience. And certainly they're a lot more fun to drive than a, than a regular gasoline car. So in my view, changing to an electric car is, is a really easy decision to make the switch. So next up, let's talk about solar. I moved to solar a few years ago, to be honest, largely for environmental reasons, but also for energy resiliency, which I'll talk about in a minute. You know, we're lucky that we live in Healdsburg City, so we actually get our electricity from Healdsburg Utility um, rather than PG&E. And Healdsburg Utility actually generates 60% of its energy from either no carbon or low carbon sources. So for example, 41% of the city's electricity actually comes from the geysers, the geothermal plant, um, which is pretty cool in its own right. Unfortunately, moving to solar is not going to be as cheap as it, as it used to be because lobbying by the oil companies has meant that the value of solar energy credits has actually been cut by 75% for most customers uh, because of the change in the rule for net metering, which is you know, obviously super frustrating. So let's talk about you know, how much energy people typically use. I mean, if I look at my electrical usage every month, I typically use under 500 kilowatt hours of power per month. And I generate 1500 kilowatt hours of power in the height of summer, which dips down to around 450 kilowatt hours in the winter months. Even in January of this year, probably one of the rainiest Januarys on record, or certainly that I can remember, I still generated 439 kilowatt hours. In other words, I'm pretty much self-sufficient when you look at how much I produce versus how much I use. However, the real game changer is when you pair solar panels with batteries. So let's talk a little bit about the batteries. Firstly, you get more credits by actually having batteries under the new rules. But more importantly, it means that you can actually be much more efficient about the way that you're using your electricity that you generate. So for example, during the day, I can actually charge up the batteries and power the house just from solar. And then at night, I can power the house 
and then charge up the car from the batteries, meaning that I very rarely have to actually call on the grid. Even more importantly though, if you live in a more rural area, you'll almost certainly have had power outages during the winter storms this year. If you have solar and you've got batteries as well, you can just power on through without interruption, which, which makes a huge difference. And that's also true when there are PSPs that are introduced during you know, fire season. Again, having a power battery backup you know, is a huge advantage. I have a client in Gainville who installed solar panels and batteries this year and he was saved four or five times when the power went out in his neighbourhood with the current sort of storms in this winter. He could carry on his Zoom calls, keep the computer running and of course keep the fridge freezer going. Now, according to him, getting the solar plus the batteries, I mean it's a total game changer for how they live during those power outages. So next up let's talk about clothes dryers, I'm not, not the sexiest of subjects, but you probably already have an electric dryer because 88% of laundry dryers sold in the US are electric. But the question is, have you got the right type? The simplest type of electrical dryer is a 120 volt dryer, which is one of those condensing washer dryers, which is a single appliance rather than two separate machines. If it's an electric resistance dryer, it uses roughly twice as much electricity as a heat pump dryer. So it really does make a big difference. You'll know which one you have because electric resistance dryers blow out hot lint filled air through a vent while heat pump dryers are ventless. They essentially extract the water from the wet laundry and then it goes down the drain and the lint is caught in a filter. So it's definitely worth checking which one that you've got because it makes a big difference to the actual running costs. We often think of going green is about you know, converting to cleaner energy, but it's equally about using less energy. So with something as simple as an electric dryer, it's worth choosing the correct type of dryer, otherwise you'll be just paying a lot more in the long run for actually running the dryer itself. So next up, let's talk about replacing a gas water heater with an electric heat pump water heater. This is where we start to move away from probably the more familiar territory. If you are interested in looking into things like electric heat pumps for water heating or electric heat pumps for heating, you should definitely check out the Sonoma Clean Power Advanced Energy Center, it's a bit of a mouthful, but where you can check out all of these appliances and talk to an expert. It's just located in downtown Santa Rosa. Most water heaters in existing homes and indeed new water heaters are actually gas powered or maybe electric resistance water heaters. However, there is a third type of water heater which is a heat pump water heater. So first let's talk about electric resistance water heaters. They work in exactly the same way as a big kettle. There's a big coil that sits in the tank that heats up which then heats up the water in the tank. However, a resistance water heater uses three to five times as much energy as a heat pump water heater. So the heat pump water heater actually collects existing heat from the air. And the energy savings of using a heat pump water heater compared to using an electric resistance water heater, over the course of a year, you'll save the equivalent to the amount of energy it takes an electric car to drive 12,000 miles. So it really is a huge difference. A heat pump water heater is definitely a larger investment up front, costing up to three times as much as a resistance water heater. But you know, it uses a third as much electricity. So like cars, there is an incremental upfront cost over a regular water heater, but over the lifetime, you'll save a ton of money. I know it's not always easy to look beyond the sticker price, but it's definitely worth it over the long term. It's worth noting that with Sonoma Clean Power, you can actually get $3,100 rebate for installing a heat pump water heater. This means if your electrical setup is ready to take a heat pump water heater, in other words, you need the 240 volts, this rebate will actually cover the entire cost of replacing a water heater. So in some ways, it makes more sense than actually getting a gas water heater. So let's talk now about heat pumps for actually heating your home. The biggest impact you can make on the environment is definitely converting your home to getting rid of your gas furnace and installing an electric heat pump to heat your home. At first, when you think about a heating system that's getting the heat from the air, it almost sounds like magic, like how could it possibly work? However, if you think about an air conditioning system, all it does is take in hot air, remove the heat, and then sends the cooler air back into the house. A heat pump works in exactly the same way, it just works in reverse. So there are a couple of different types of electric heat pump for heating your home. There are ductless systems, and then there are ducted systems. So let's talk about ducted systems first. So ducted systems have an outdoor unit similar to a condenser in a traditional AC system. And then this unit connects to your home's ductwork via an indoor air handling unit, 
which will often be installed where the gas furnace was. The hot air and cool air is then delivered through the ducting to the living area in exactly the same way it would be with a gas furnace. So let's talk about the ductless systems. So these ductless systems, they're sometimes called mini splits and they have an outdoor unit that is connected to an indoor unit by a small refrigerant pipe. And the mini splits, as they're called, they're, they typically serve one room um, and they can be mounted either on the wall, on the floor, or actually set into the ceiling in some cases. And these mini splits are a great option for homes that you know, don't have existing ductwork or where ductwork is particularly hard to put in. You'll probably have seen some of these units on the walls or ceilings of homes you've been in. And you'll often actually see them in secondary units or ADUs because it's often easier to install a standalone unit in an ADU rather than trying to connect the ADU to the main furnace via ducting. So the big difference between a gas furnace and a heat pump is that when you come into a cold home with a gas furnace, you'd put the heating on full blast and the home would very quickly warm up. With a heat pump, because it works based on the, the temperature gradient between the indoor and the outdoor air, it can't deliver such a big temperature change as quickly as a traditional gas furnace. So while it can't deliver fast changes, they do keep a much more even heat across the entire home. So there is one other type of heat pump, which is an air to water heat pump, as opposed to the air to air pump that we've just talked about. And this will actually cool and heat your home as well as provide hot water, all from a single unit. The neat thing about these is that they extract heat from the ambient air to then heat up the water in the water tank, which is then used either to heat the home through hydronic heating system or just provide hot water. Because it is all one system, it effectively turns the water heater into like a water battery to store energy until it's needed. It sounds obvious given water retains heat so well, but these systems are only just coming to the fore, but they're definitely gonna be the future. So if you are thinking about getting an electric heat pump to heat your home, definitely consider one of these like all-in-one units to heat both the home and your hot water. So finally, let's talk about replacing the gas stove with an induction cooktop. This is one of those things that's definitely a biggest emotional decision for a lot of people. And you know, me included. Like many people, I remember using electric cookers at ho holiday rentals and actually at my late father's home. It was a constant battle trying to regulate the temperature and get the right heat at the right time just to keep a, a saucepan of water on the boil without it boiling over. That being said, I recently had to actually look into an induction stovetop because I was building out a Sprinter adventure van and an induction cooktop made the most sense with the power setup in the van. And to be honest, I was pretty nervous about committing to one as my only means of cooking. But if you are interested in trying one out, I discovered that PG&E runs a program where you can actually sign up to receive a standalone induction cooktop on a trial basis and just test it out for four weeks for free. So before I ordered my cooktop from a van, I actually took PG&E up on their offer. And I have to say, it definitely changed my mind. I was amazed about two things. Firstly, how quickly it heated up from cold. And then secondly, how easy it was to regulate the temperature and keep a pot of water on the boil with a consistent simmer. Two things I was definitely really skeptical about prior to my trial. So have I changed out my gas stove at home? Well, the answer is no. Would I buy an induction cooktop in my next home? To be honest, it would be a tough call because I am mostly vested in, my, in a gas stove. But that being said, I'll probably have my mind made up for me because California is gonna stop selling gas stoves pretty soon. At least I now know I would quickly get used to it and probably wouldn't end up missing a gas stove. It's like anything, just change is difficult to start with. So with California leading the way, we'll all be required to get rid of gas appliances and systems over time. There's no question that the upfront costs of electric appliances are definitely high. What I hadn't realized is just how much cheaper all of these electric appliances and systems are to run than the traditional equivalents. So if you care about saving money in the long term, the moment you need to replace your heating or water heater, it makes zero sense to put in a gas version if you're planning to stay in your home for any period of time. Not to mention, there are many other great benefits besides. As with any big change, it needs to make economic sense for people to make the switch. Making an individual contribution to climate change is almost certainly never enough. The good news is that if we do make that choice, you'll definitely be rewarded financially and, and also will have a healthier home. If you are thinking of making a big investment in your home and want some advice on whether you'll recoup the investment when you sell it, please do get in touch at 
david at brewingtonhardreeves.com or just call me on 707 238 2112. Thanks for watching this video. Until the next video, go well.